All right, so uh, I was asked uh, to do a short review on the new Sony A7 Mark II um, and how I like it and how it's working. Um, I'm basically shooting this camera alongside my Nikon and I have used it for one wedding so far and so here's what I think. All right, so uh, let's talk features. So 24 megapixel full frame sensor. Uh, it has a lot of features. Uh, this particular camera has everything from full uh, 4K video output, so you can you know do that cinematic 4K. A uh, lot of videos. Uh, features but it's also got uh, Wi-Fi it's got apps uh, it's got near field um, for most for the most part I'm gonna ignore all that uh, just because really you're not gonna need those for photography so here is the camera the Sony a7 Mark II has a lot of really cool features for photography and I'd like to just point out a few uh, and maybe talk about some of the downfalls of this particular camera. Um, so the, the features for photography for me are that it has the 24 megapixel full frame sensor. It's supposed to be the same sensor that is in the Nikon D750. So it's pushing around the same dynamic range. Uh, particularly, this um, camera system does not yet have lossless or uncompressed RAW. It is a lossy RAW. Um, so you do lose a little bit in the darks on this. Um, but uh, if you're coming from Canon, you're going to see a uh, a vast improvement in uh, your dynamic range. Now this particular camera in what I've shot and in editing the RAWs uh, it is a little bit different from shooting a Nikon. Um, normally with my Nikon I would shoot a little bit underexposed because of that lossless or uncompressed RAW um, what I can get in the darks are uh, really clean. Uh, I'm shooting the D610 and I've been able to push uh, probably three and a half, maybe four stops out of the dark, which is uh, pretty fantastic. Um, shooting a D300 before, there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of leeway in those RAWs. Same with the D700, not a huge amount of leeway. Definitely uh, you're pushing like um, you know, 12 and a half, maybe 13 stops with the D700. With the D610, with the D750, you're looking at closer to 14 and a half, almost pushing to 15 on the uh, D750. Uh, you're going to get the same with this. It just uh, is tuned a little different. So this particular sensor, it is tuned uh, more toward the um, the high end so it's going to capture a little bit more of the high end uh, color so you can actually uh, normally with my Nikon I'd be shooting exposing for bright uh, exposing for the highlights with this you can uh, shoot exposing for midtones um, and just leave the bare minimum of the um, the brights. You can probably shoot this more like you can shoot a, like you'd shoot a Canon than you would shoot the Nikon. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's just getting the most out of this. This does have an option to set it to uh, really capitalize on the dynamic range in your RAWs. I did turn that on, so it's it's a really nice feature. Um, Another really nice feature is this has in-body stabilization. So it's got five axis stabilization, which uh, will actually give you about four stops is what Sony says. Four stops of uh, stabilization 
Um, so you can drop your, your uh, shutter speed down four stops below what you would normally do. Uh, you know, shooting it, you could shoot um, an 85 millimeter lens at uh, 1 20th of a second. And uh, some people online have done tests and gotten relatively good uh, clear images at 1 15th of a second on an 85 millimeter, which is pretty stunning. Um, so uh, that's a really nice feature. Um, but again, that does take battery life, which brings me to one of the downsides of this particular camera, and that is the battery life. So um, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. We've got a digital viewfinder. So the viewfinder is actually a three and a half megapixel viewfinder, um, whereas the screen, so the screen is one megapixel, uh, your standard screen, same uh, basic screen that you'll get on your uh, 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III, um, uh, all of your Nikons, um, basically your one megapixel screen. But this viewfinder is a three megapixel viewfinder, uh, which means you're going to get a clearer image looking at this than you do here. Now, the downfall with that is your viewfinder uses battery power. Um, the problem with that is this particular camera, the battery is a about a 1000 milliamp. Normally with uh, your Nikon we're looking at uh, 1800 milliamp. Um, so I used this for a wedding last weekend and I was using it as my second camera and the battery died after 200 shots, which is pretty unacceptable uh, as far as like the camera camera lasting. Um, in my Nikon, I'll shoot all day on a single battery and it's fine. So this does suck power. So you'll see that I have a grip on here. This grip is uh, holding two batteries and kind of a brilliant thing with this, it has a system so that this camera uses uh, them sequentially. So it looks at them and it takes the one that has the least amount of power and it uses that first and then it'll just hop over to the other one. So right now uh, my battery 2 has 20% life on it and my battery 1 has 100%. So it preserves the battery power in that uh, 100% until uh, the lowest one is at 0% and then it'll jump over, which is really nice. So once I get that down to zero, which they always recommend, you should always run your batteries down to zero before you charge them. That way you're going to keep the largest amount of battery in there. So uh, it's a really, really nice feature. Um, the other thing is, remember all that Wi-Fi stuff and, and the fancy, fancy wireless options on it? That is running all the time. So it's constantly looking for Wi-Fi access points. It's constantly looking for uh, NFC uh, phone communication or, or whatever you're, you're uh, using. And so if it picks any of that up, it's going to decrease your battery life. It's going to be hunting and trying to connect and stuff. So uh, one of the things I read and eventually uh, did was I turned on airplane mode. Yes, the same type of thing as you have on your phone. Uh, it has that option on here. So you can turn that airplane mode on and then you will be able to um, your battery will last a lot longer. Now when I was shooting the wedding I managed to get about 350 shots using two batteries. I was down to about 20-30% uh, after 350 shots. But that was before I turned on the airplane mode. Uh, I also set the uh, the power protection uh, the uh, power saver 
to turn off after 10 seconds. And that might seem like really quick, but the moment you tap on your, uh, your shutter button, it wakes up and it's ready to go. So it takes just under a second. Like it's, it's not that long. Uh, normally for me, I'm actually shutting it off. Uh, you have your switch here, so you can turn it off and on. Um, one of the issues with the previous A7 was it took a long time to turn on. Uh, with this one, it's on. That's how quick this is. It's really, really nice uh, startup time in comparison to the previous model. Um, so, uh, with all of that, I've been running on the same battery for, I think, three days. Um, now, I haven't been shooting a lot. I keep this in my camera bag that I wear all the time. Uh, and it's really nice, really small, really light. Um, technically speaking, I could really just use this like that. Um, and it is a tiny, tiny little camera. Full frame, all the nice features. Um, great to walk around with, but I do like the grip personally because um, with the grip, I don't have my pinky floating out here. And it is, since it is a small light camera, it's, it's kind of hard to use, uh, especially when you get a larger lens on there. So once you put the grip on here, you have a lot more control, a lot more ease of uh, of steadying this particular camera. Um, also, if you, you do the um, Joe McNally uh, wrap up, it's, you know, pretty quick. Um, so that's some fun stuff about this camera. Um, I have on it the 28 millimeter 2.0 uh, and it was about 450 bucks, uh, approximately the same price, a uh, little bit cheaper than my uh, 28 millimeter f1.8 G, the N series from Nikon, um, which I'm actually shooting this on. So uh, I've noticed this particular lens is a little bit sharper than my Nikon. I generally shoot my Nikon at f2 and at f2 this is a little bit sharper and focus is really quick. So um, that brings me to another point about this camera. Um, so this is an electronic focus ring. Um, the nice thing, I have it set to a dynamic manual focus. So it's autofocus, um, but when I You'll notice on here, when I go to focus and I touch this focus ring, it gives me a pixel for pixel view of what's going on. I've also got some focus helps in there, so it's showing me focus peaking. So it's giving me that uh, little edge around there so I can see what's in focus. And you'll notice that it goes back after a second and then I can take the photo really nice photos again. Um, so this, uh, the features on this for manual focus are really nice. Speaking of manual focus, we also have some really cool options as far as manual focus lenses go. Um, you'll notice some of the lenses on this system are rather expensive. Uh, I have ordered the Zeiss 55mm 1.8, which should be here Monday, um, and it is supposedly an incredibly sharp lens. Now, the, the thing about that, um, it's normally a $950 lens. I got it used on Amazon, uh, and the Amazon checks it all out and makes sure it's in functional c condition, and uh, so says it's really nice. I got it for $750. So um, that particular lens has some incredibly sharp um, images that come out of it. But uh, it is a 1.8 and you might be thinking, 
$750 for a 1.8 lens. It's a Zeiss, number one, but uh, it is um, a T-stop 1.8 as well. So you're actually getting the full transmission of 1.8 through it. Uh, just for reference, um, if you're looking at uh, a Nikon 1.8 or a Canon 1.8, you're normally looking at f-stop 1.8, t-stop 2.0 to 2.1 uh, or 2 on, in some cases. Um, so the reason why you're getting a t-stop 1.8 on that Zeiss is because they have a lot of coded elements in it, so it's transmitting almost all of the light that it should be if there were no lenses in there, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, when we're talking about Canon like 1.2 lenses, uh, those generally are going to push uh, into the 1.5, uh, 1.6 uh, T-stop range. Um, one point, yeah, about 1.5. Uh, Canon and Nikon 1.4s, we're looking at 1.6, 1.7 uh, as the T-stop. So looking at those 1.4s versus the 1.8, you're actually getting really close with the amount of light that you're getting in. So you're getting really bright, uh, really nice contrast, really smooth bokeh on that Zeiss lens, which is why it's about you know, $900. Um, so this feature here with the manual lens, uh, this is a photos Photasi, Fota, Fotasi, uh, lens mount, and this is my OM one's 50 millimeter 1.8, and so I actually have two of these lenses, um, and so I figured, what the heck, I'll get a mount for it. These mounts are on Amazon for about 10 to 15 dollars, so it's really, really cheap, really inexpensive for these things. So definitely, if you've got some old glass that's really nice, lots of character sitting around, you can just get these mounts. I also have this mount for uh, M42. So that's an M42 screw mount. Um, and that is, um, that was again, 10 to $15 uh, Amazon primed and this is a Mamiya 135 f2.8 lens. It's, it's got your coded, um, coded elements and it's really sharp, really nice, uh, really nice look. So really cool about that. But the interesting thing about when I put this on my camera is I get a three axis stabilization. So now I've got my um, my 50 millimeter 1.8 uh, Zuiko lens for the OM system uh, and it's stabilized. So uh, I'm getting those extra stops and again we've got uh, focus peaking so we can get a really nice focus and know what's in what's in focus and get some really cool images out of this system. So. Again, this particular camera, I'm really enjoying it. Great viewfinder, really bright. Um, lots of nice features. Uh, battery is a little sketchy, but if you just get a bunch of batteries and get a grip, you're gonna be fine. Um, I am considering the possibility of moving from Nikon to this Sony just because this system is so good, the stabilization is so good, the viewfinder is so good, um, and yeah, it is a really, really nice system.